first recipe is creme anglaise, which will yield approximately 40 ounces of custard sauce. The ingredients are 1 quart heavy whipping cream, 10 ounces granulated sugar, 1 vanilla bean split, or 4 teaspoons vanilla extract, and 12 egg yolks. Okay, today we're making a creme anglaise sauce. The creme anglaise sauce is the most, uh, uh, most uh, or widely produced uh, uh, product in the bake shop. A creme anglaise sauce can be used as a sauce itself. You can add flavors to it. You can use it as a, a base for ice cream. You can use it as a, as a base for Bavarian cream. There are so many uses for creme anglaise uh, in the bake shop that uh, uh, it's something that each uh, pastry person should know how to make. Uh, in order for us to make creme glaze sauce, there's a very basic recipe. You start out with cream, sugar, egg yolks, and vanilla. Okay. In order for us to do it properly, I'm going to split the vanilla bean in half and scrape out the vanilla uh, beans within the, the pot. Here you see we have the vanilla bean opened up and you scrape the vanilla beans out of there and I like to put it into the sugar. As you see the, the vanilla bean kind of lumps up but if you take it and massage it into the sugar it will actually break up where it's nice and even distributed out through the product. So just take with your finger and spread out the vanilla beans throughout the sugar a little bit. Okay, so here we have it like that. Now we start out with the cream and put it in our pot. And you want to use a non-reactive pot, meaning that it's best to use a stainless steel bowl for this application. And you take and go ahead and put the vanilla bean in there and put it on the stove and bring it to a boil. Okay. While this is coming to a boil, we're going to go ahead and combine the sugar and the yolks and stir them up till they're nice and smooth. The reason we do that is that when the milk or the cream comes off the stove, we want to make sure that it's nice and smooth already and as the hot cream hits the yolk, it does not coagulate the egg yolks and makes this the mixture lumpy. Okay? As you see, as we stir it, it becomes nice and light, and that's what you're looking for. You want to look for a very nice and smooth mixture here for us to add our warm cream to. Let's take a look at our cream. It takes a little while for it to come. When you make a creme anglaise sauce, it's again a very versatile uh, product. You can add every kind of flavor to it. If you want to make a chocolate creme anglaise sauce, when this comes off the stove and is done, you can have some finely chopped chocolate and add to the warm mixture and you'll have a chocolate creme anglaise sauce. You can add coffee flavors, you can add uh, liqueurs in order for, to make any flavors that you want. Um, again, it's the most versatile uh, product that we do in the bake shop. I can see that the cream is starting to almost to come to a boil here. It takes very little time to make a small batch of creme anglaise. Okay, now our cream has started to come to a simmer and we're going to go ahead and temper in our cream into our yolk mixture. The reason we do that is that we, we want to make sure that we do not create a custard right away. So if we added them together in the boiling mixture, it would become a custard right away. So we start out with one, one ladle and mix it in very carefully. What we're doing, we're making sure that our egg yolks is not scalded and is prepared to go into the hot liquid. We have our hot liquid here. We're going to go ahead and very carefully put in our yolk mixture. Make sure we get all of it in there and 
mixing again. At this point, I'm going to put it back on the stove, and I'm going to bring it back to just a simmer. What, the, what you're looking for, you're looking for a thickness where you just can coat the back of a spoon in order to have a nice creme and glaze. If you overcook it, it'll be too thick. And sometimes, because of the egg yolks, it'll actually create a custard. You do not want a custard, you want a sauce. If it gets cooked a little bit too thick, you can add a little bit of cream to thin it out sometimes. And if it's undercooked, you can not put it back on the stove again, but you can you still use it in buttercream and icings and stuff like that as a flavor. Let's put it back on the stove again. And as you see, as a mixer, you can see the foam on top of the, uh, the surface of the mixture here. What I'm looking to do, I'm looking to bring, I'm looking to bring this mix up to a, 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 a temperature between 186 to 190 degrees. That's going to crackulate our egg yolk and make sure that we become a nice sauce. If you can bring it any farther higher up than that, what's going to happen is we're going to turn it into a custard and we're looking to make a sauce. You can see the foam forming on top of the... Uh, As you come to the close of the right temperature, you can feel the velocity and the texture of the uh, cream getting a little bit thicker by the resistance that is toward your whip. But it's very important that you keep stirring the mixture so you do not scorch the bottom of the pan. I can feel now I'm getting close to the point where I want to be. So I'm going to give it just a second more. I can see the foam is kind of disappearing. That means I'm starting to get a little bit of a texture to my sauce here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it off the heat and put it right here. And I'm going to take my tasting spoon or my measuring spoons and check and see if I have the uh, texture that I'm looking for. It's not quite there yet, but see, it's starting to coat the back of the spoon. So basically, I'm just going to very briefly heat it one more time. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do use the residual heat that is in the bottom of this thick pan uh, bowl to get the texture that I'm looking for. As you see, the steam is coming off the pot, and I'm going to try one more time to show you how we coat the back of the spoon. See the thickness of the, of the uh, creme and glaze now? We're going to use the back of the spoon. See how it coats the back of the spoon? Take it like this. It stays. It does not run. We now have a very nice creme and glaze. Okay? The main thing is to, you don't want to let it sit in the pot too long because what happens is the residual heat will keep cooking the custard and you're going to wind up with, with, uh, uh, with a, a custard instead of it. So you run it through a strainer right away. And as you see, if you take a look at the pot I have here, it's starting to turn into custard, so you've got to be very careful not to do that. But if you take a look at my creme and glaze sauce right here, it has the perfect texture and is ready for, uh, ready for service. We have left, after we strain our creme and glaze sauce, I have a vanilla bean here that is, uh, have been used once. But what I do with the vanilla bean in order to save this, plenty of flavor left in this vanilla bean. I take a little bit of cold water and I just rinse it off, and now I will let it sit, and I'll let it sit and dry out a little bit, and then I just put it in a bowl of sugar, and then as it sit and marinate with the sugar, you're creating a, uh, a vanilla sugar. To get back to the creme and glaze sauce, it's very important that as soon as you get it, you will take it and you come over it on the top with a film wrap. Otherwise, the uh, creme and glaze sauce will create a skin, and that skin can actually create lumps within the, uh, the product as you need to use it, okay?